Um, well, I think um, I'll address you, if I may, sitting down, because I can then read my notes. But uh, can you hear me? If you can't, please uh, t tell me. But I have to tell you that when I got this letter from the Islington Society several months ago, I thought, what is going on? My past is catching up with, with me because I don't know, um, I, I recognise several faces here, Harley and Mary and one or two others, but for those of you here who don't know me, I used to live in Islington uh, in the, uh, up to about 19, for about 20 years from 1963. I became an Islington councillor very early on, um, determined, really determined to change the world. And this committee room has a very close connection to the Packington Estate because this is committee room number one where the housing committee used to meet. And I used to sit over there, the chairman of the housing committee sat there, flanked by the council officers. And the councillors, members of the committee sat where you're all sitting now. So this room brings back... Uh, I said, well, yes, fairly um, unpleasant memories because I, <laughs> because I saw it going through the machine and eventually I was caught up in the machine and spewed out and I was warned by friends, I had friends on the Islington Council who said, look, shut up, otherwise well, they all get thrown out and I was thrown out. Now, having said that, um, I don't know whether I'm foolhardy or brave to come here tonight because the last time I opened my mouth in public on the Packington Estate, it fell about, everything fell about my ears. So, um, you know, I've got mixed emotions tonight addressing you, but I'm very uh, pleased and honoured to be here and I'll try and do my best to explain to you how it was that the, uh, the local authority, the democratically elected council, uh, together um, aided and abetted by the Labour government and uh, at that time it was Harold Wilson um, and his uh, Minister of Housing Richard Crossman um, uh, pushed this scheme through and I must say that it was against the better judgment of Richard Crossman I mean he's dead now so we don't want to speak bad of the dead but what happened was that the Packington estate was uh, terraced housing and I produced this dossier I call it, it's not like Tony Blair's dossier, but it is fairly <laughs> accurate and it does give a street plan of what the Packington Estate was like, besides some other things, and if you haven't got a copy, I've got several left. Um, and what happened was that the estate was bought by a, a property development company, yes, and uh, they were going to uh, rehabilitate the houses, but in order to do that, they had to get vacant possession of some of the properties, quite a few of them, and uh, they did put pressure on the tenants. And of course, the tenants went to their protectors, the London Borough of Islington. And uh, the Islington Council uh, eventually, uh, under threat of compulsory purchase, bought the, the, the Packington Estate. And it was in 1963 they bought it. And um, I was on the committee at the time, and I was assured by the chairman of the housing committee that he was going to try and rehabilitate the properties for council tenants. I thought, jolly good show, because the government at the time issued a circular uh, encouraging people who owned these sort of houses and indeed uh, people they were tenanted to, to apply for improvement grants. That was the plan. But unfortunately, the government of the day um, decided that it would be better uh, to, to uh, house people in, in, in purpose-built flats. You could get many more people, they said, to the acre, which is not true, as Harley will tell you. It's not true that you can in London and other in, uh, inner cities of, of Britain. And they opted for a more or less a factory-made, uh, prefabricated, precast system building. And they went for that. And not only did they go for it, but they, but they restructured the subsidy system so as to really force local authorities to build these 
concrete estate. And Islington had to conform. And the chairman of the housing committee at the time um, asked his professionals to look into it and it showed that the subsidy system would benefit them if they opted for redevelopment. So it wasn't an aesthetic decision, it was purely financial. And using this system and uh, with the government subsidy would result in a lesser burden on the, as they were then, the ratepayers of the borough. So there was no question about it, it was purely financial. So away, away they went, but, uh, they, but there, was a, there was a small problem here. They appointed an architect who produced uh, a system and a plan uh, for industrialised building, but unfortunately, the county council at the time, the London County Council, had already given a planning consent to the owners of the, the terraced houses for a rehabilitation scheme. So the council were really snookered because the, 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 the London County Council, as they were, was then, refused to give them a planning consent. So they uh, uh, appealed to the Minister, Ministry of Housing. They more or less said to the Ministry of Housing, look, we, we want to do, you, you want to use industrialised building, you've encouraged us to do it. So the Minister said, right, let there be a public inquiry. And there was a public inquiry, and I was told that if I gave evidence to this public inquiry against the London Borough of Islington, I would be expelled from the Labour Party. Well, I have to tell you that the Islington Society, bless them, were one of the few objectors. There were 400 uh, residents out who didn't live on the estate objecting, and there were three councillors. I was one of them. There was a councillor Morley and a councillor Grant. Now they were independent. I was the thir third councillor. But the rest of the council were all Labour councillors, and they didn't, they, they didn't open their mouths. Um, now, the LCC, the London County Council said, and I've got it because there was a public inquiry in 1965 by, uh, held by the uh, inspector, Mr Pride, an architect, I might tell you, and uh, some of the things he said, I, I, I couldn't believe, and it's in the report which I've got here. The, the London County Council said that Town Planning Committee considered that the appeal be dismissed because the destruction of the existing buildings and character of the area would be regrettable. If possible, the building should be rehabilitated. The proposed redevelopment would be intrusive and alien in character to that of the remaining properties in the area. So good for the London County Council. Unfortunately, very shortly after this, they were changed into the Greater London Council and they changed their minds. Then they supported London Borough of Islington. But it's really unbelievable. Uh, the Islington Society gave evidence, and this is what the Islington Society said. I don't know whether anybody else has got a copy, or whether the Islington Society has a copy of the Inspector Pride, Mr. Pride's report. I hardly would know, I think. <coughs> you have? No, I don't yeah. know. Right, well, this is what the Islington Society said. The houses are small enough for the occupation of a single family or for a subdivision into two maisonettes. They have reasonable but not excessive yard or garden space, <coughs> and they're arranged in a seemly fashion. I love that word, seemly fashion. In little terraces with enough small squares or similar garden spaces to make a very agreeable environment. The area has three attractive features, a canal cutting Union Square and Arlington Square, and the only disruption to the scene are two ill-conceived tower blocks. <coughs> The effect of the proposed development, the substitution of some 16 blocks of houses of varying small height and varying but harmonious outward form by what is in effect two very large buildings, two or three storeys greater in height and of wholly uniform appearance, they would divide the site into two and dominate the remaining parts of the area, which are of smaller scale, older and more elegant building. The sense of outrage, and this I would underline, they said, the Islington Society said, the sense of outrage would be severe, as the area is perhaps more essentially Islington than any other part of the borough. The destruction of the houses on the site and the replacement by the buildings proposed 
would constitute an ir irreparable loss in Islington and is unwarrantable. Now, <coughs> that evidence is absolutely crucial. Uh, thank you, absolutely crucial. And how strong the evidence comes after f nearly 40, 40 years. It's on the record. And that's what the authorities do not like. We haven't heard any apologies from anybody about the, uh, the Packington estate. And remember this, Packington is just a, a small example of what's been going on right across Britain in most of the, our urban conurbations and cities. Southwark uh, has got some terrible things there. Greenwich has got some awful problems. Up in Liverpool and Glasgow, they've got... Packington is small beer compared to it, but the difference with Packington, it's on the record. And not many civic societies came out against the government and the local authority. And to the eternal credit of the Islington Society, they spoke up. And the Minister of Housing seems to have ignored them. The inspector seems to have ignored them. Now, I gave evidence, well, you would expect me to, get, to say what I did say. And I did say, at that time, there was some terrible slum tenements off King's Cross called Beaconsfield Buildings and terrible slum tenements in Popham Street where six families were sharing an outside loo. That's how they were living there. And the Islington Council were going to pull these houses down and leave these slum tenements standing. There was no sense of priority and it didn't make sense to the local people. Um, I said, people in, if they pulled these houses down, people living in slum conditions in Popham Street and on your, off the King's Cross and a stone's throw from the appeal site would see good houses on Packington demolished and new dwellings occupied, possibly by people from other parts of Islington. This, I said, would indeed constitute an almost limit of social injustice. And it did, that's exactly what it did. Now, had, had this gone forward in the normal way and the Packington built, in accordance with what we would call democratic procedures, okay, fine, they did it. But in order to get it through, they used what I call devious means. The inspector at the inquiry, and uh, the, he, um, he recommended that the estate be pulled down, but he kept on, I, mean, I won't bother you with, with his recommendations, but he said, the building should be no more than six storeys high, that is the new development, the appeal should be allowed, and the redevelopment may be carried out with the use of recognised industrialised building method as indicated in the application. And he also said, somewhere, or the Islington Council said, I've got it in this document, that if it was done by industrialised building, the buildings could last up to 100 years. 100 years. And it's, they, were, they were finished in 1970. It put, makes them 35 years old. And they're coming down. And they're not only coming down, but they're coming down in many towns right across Britain. The question I put to you, as, rate, as council taxpayers and uh, income taxpayers, are we so rich that we can build these big estates and then pull them down in 35 years? And the other thing is, no one has come up from the government, this government or previous governments, and said, we made a mistake, we shouldn't have done it, we're sorry. Why? Because in politics, never apologise and never explain. Just push on. That's ridiculous. They made an awful error, but they will not admit it. It's like the dome. Nobody says sorry for the dome. There it stands. Yeah, it cost a billion pounds. Nobody can say sorry. No one. That's the way we're governed. So that deals with the inspector's report. He recommended the whole place come down. But how did they get it through? Well, what happened was this. Mr. Crossman, the Minister of Housing, a very erudite man, he used to be MP, I think, for Oxford, and he was an Oxford City Councillor. He decided, I wrote to him about this at great length. And he did a very unwise thing for a minister. He got personally involved in the Packington estate. I've got long letters signed by Richard Crossman to me in my, what I call, archive. I've got them. Giving me all the arguments and saying I can't make a decision because I'm waiting for the inspector's report, etc., etc., etc. Well, the inspector's report came recommending demolition. 
and building what you now see. He wrote a letter to the council, who are the appellants, the people appealing, saying, I'm not quite happy with this scheme you've submitted. There are certain things about it I don't like, and I've got to be convinced that the scheme has put forward um, will, be, will, will be an improvement on the existing environment. It's all in writing, it's all on record. I should think the documents in the Ministry of Housing have been shredded a long time ago. Anyway, that's what he did. Right, so the council are going to put in a revised scheme. So they got the drawings and they made the most marginal alterations to the scheme that you now have. And they were so marginal, not true. And resubmitted it. Mr. Crossman got this. He looked at it and he thought, hmm, I'm a bit worried about this. I really am not convinced that it would be better to pull the houses down. What to do? The appellants, including the Islington Society, went to the Borough Council and said, may we please have a look at the, revi the revised scheme? And the council said, yes, we would love to show it to you, but we can't until we have heard from the minister. Well, they didn't hear from the minister, and the appellants never saw the revised scheme. But Mr Crossman did. He knew it was slate of hand. He knew it, it, it was virtually the scheme which the, 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 the objectors were objecting to. So, the, so what happened was the objectors had no chance to see the revised scheme. So what happened then was the objectors went to an august body called the Council of Trib on Tribunals, an independent council, to look at democratic processes in local and central government. So we appealed to the Council on Tribunals. And whilst we were appealing the permanent secretary at the Ministry of Housing knew this was going on. And guess what she did? Behind the minister's back, she signed the letter of approval. Now that was unfair. The objectors were not fairly treated. In other words, to use an expression, the system was buggered up. And the council got the letter, Wait, the building contractors were standing by. That was it. And they started to demolish the houses. Now, Mr. Crossman actually um, wrote when he died, before it, well, it was published, I think, after he died, it was published, and he told the truth. He said, as soon as Brack left the room, because I went to see him, can you imagine, I actually went to see the Minister of Housing. Why did he see me? Because he knew he was personally involved in the Packington estate. It wasn't some the run corner estate up in wherever, up in Scumthorpe or whatever. It was in Islington. And he was personally involved. And at first he refused to see me. He was too busy. They all was too busy. And I said to his underlings, if he doesn't see me, I will hold a press conference and I'll I'll give them hell. And guess what? I got a phone call. Come up to the ministry and meet the minister. Which I did. And he says, as soon as Brack left, I walked along the passage to the dame, that dame Evelyn Sharp's room, and told her what Brack had said, adding rather angrily, the trouble is that when you heard about the Council on Tribunals, you rushed out the second letter and infuriated the Council without telling me about it. At this she, she replied, of course we did. We had no, had to. If the press had got hold of it first, we would never have got our decision. This made me very angry indeed. Here was the dame brazing it out, saying she had to act in this way behind my back. This was in the Crossman diaries, in order to get the decision. And I've got to be fair to Crossman, and this is me right, he had to put the record straight because as a man of some taste and culture, he had deeper, res deep reservations about the Packington design and his inspector's report recommending demolition. So that really is how they got it through. It's possible that if she hadn't signed that letter, Crossman would have said no way. But in the subsequent debate in the House of Commons, yes, there was a debate in the House of Commons, there was 32 pages of, of Hansard. He had to not to rock the boat, and he defended his civil servants and all the rest of it. But that, you know, you had to play the game in this country if you 
make a mistake, you've still got to defend your side. But that was a great shame. So where does it all leave us? Well, it was a mistake. It, unfortunately, in politics, or fortunately in politics, after a few years, everybody forgets everything. But when you build, it's out there. It won't go away. And that's the reason why it's not the IRA. They haven't gone away. But the only thing they can do, these councils up and down the country, is to demolish these estates. And that is what they are doing right across Britain. They're demolishing these estates. They don't like them. They're an embarrassment. A lot of them, they say, are structurally unsound. Um, now, I think I've covered that part of it. Um, what worries me about it is it's a failure of the democratic procedures as applied to our planning system. How to get a planning consent, it's called. <laughs> and property developers will tell you there are ways and means of getting a planning consent. The other thing that worries me is the autocracy of local and central government over our affairs. You want to put a, back, a shed up in your garden or whatever, they're down on you like a ton of bricks. And here, in this huge development, there are 2,000 people living here. It was on the whim of a permanent civil servant. And that's how we're governed. And I'm sure things go on like that to this very day. But fortunately, as Mary Cross said in her, in her little booklet, the, the Squares of Islington, we lost the battle. But we won the war, because by 1970, I think the government got the message. And all I would like to say is, I've met with the tenants of the Packington Estate, and believe me, they're a different cup of tea to the, ten to the people who inhabited the original terrace houses. Which brings me to my last comment before I'll take any questions. What we're really talking about is the relevance and the importance of a the terraced house in our society. We, we've been living in terrace. I was born, in, born, born and bred in a terrace house in London. British people, English people, are used to terrace houses in their towns. They're cheap to build. They give you a little defensible space. You have your backyard or your garden, and you've got your own front door. For some reason or other, the architects and the planners in, our, in this country have thought, no, that's not the place... That's not the place of them. They should be better off in purpose-built flats, where you, you just get, you go into a lift and so on. Um, and in fact, when I argued with Crossman, I, I said to him, you know, uh, why are you doing this? And he said, I think council tenants are better off in purpose-built flats. That's what he said. And I said to him, well, Minister, it's all very well for you to go back to your Georgian farmhouse in Banbury, but people want their own little defensible space and you're not prepared to give it to them. So I think if the, the, the London Borough of Islington can't satisfy the tenants, then it's up to the tenants to have a united front and get the best deal they can. I don't expect them to rebuild the Packington Estate. No, I don't. But why should the better off people in Islington have the terraced houses uh, and the council tenants have to be in flats. It doesn't have to be like that. They could be. I mean, I've got pictures here of terraced housing that they are building in Islington. In fact, the council have built ter terraced houses in, in, in Islington. And really, when you look at them, there's no reason why that they shouldn't be built. Um, I've gone across the borough looking for these terraced houses and they are there. There's some in the Richmond Road. There's some council terraced houses in Highbury Station Road, which are now selling for over 400,000 each. You won't get 400,000 for a Packington flat. I mean, it's these, for private people, yes, there are terraced houses you can buy in London. Look at them, there they are. And so on it goes. So, for the future, I advise the tenants of the Packington estate, estate to close ranks and give the council help in order to get a reasonable solution. And I'm sure the, the, the Tony Bird and Brendan, his br brother, who, they'll know what to do. And so also Sam Webb, the architect, is here. He should be congratulated. On behalf, as Tony Blair said, the weak and the hard-working families. So I'll sit down and take some questions.